So welcome everybody. This is the first talk of the afternoon session for UGM 2020 for IRODS. This is day two of three. And this, this talk is going to be uh, by Rinkfitter and uh, Yella Teowissen from Utrecht University. They're gonna talk about uh, IRODS C Sharp. And this is the uh, best student technology uh, award winner this year. This is an award given by the IRADS Consortium, uh, originally funded by some of the people uh, from the DICE group uh, to encourage submission from uh, students around the world uh, on IRADS related technologies. So congratulations and thank you very much. Uh, go for it. All right. Well, thank you. Um, first of all, uh, well, good evening to everybody. I guess it's afternoon for most of you, but um, here in the Netherlands it's evening. So good evening. Um, my name is Ring Fitter, and um, my partner, Jelle Theo, uh, as you saw uh, earlier, uh, we both worked on the iRODS C Sharp uh, clients, which is the first C Sharp client for iRODS. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what we did and uh, what the client looks like. But um, before I start with that, um, let's just talk a little bit about ourselves, as I like to do a lot. <laughs> um, we are two students from the uh, Utrecht University. We're both um, studying computer sciences. Uh, we're both in our second year as to, uh, at the moment. Um, but at the end of last year, we both uh, enrolled into the honors program, uh, which is a program for some uh, extra challenge for students. Uh, you can see a group photo of us here on the left in Brno. Uh, that's us over there. Um, but uh, the honors program isn't just all uh, international trips and fun. We also had to do some assignments and one of our assignments was uh, to be part of a research group. Uh, in our case that was the Care to Report research group which is a uh, research focused on uh, building some software for a medical consultation uh, to transcribe the speech and uh, um, all the diagnosis um, software and whatever and uh, transcribe it to a, a medical summary so that um, the medical professionals, professionals don't have to spend as much time um, writing things down, but can spend more time on uh, actually consulting the patients. Now, our job for this, um, for this program, for this, uh, this research was to um, write the log data from the software to Yoda. Um, you might have heard from Yoda, uh, from uh, Laszlo and uh, Chris yesterday or a couple years back. Um, which is a system based on IRODS. So um, basically our job was to write some log data to IRODS directly. Um, and the question for us was how we're, are we going to do that? Well, we thought of some different solutions, but finally we ended up with the solution to build a C-sharp client for IRODS. Um, there's a couple of reasons why. First of all, um, this was very easy to integrate into the C2R system. Uh, the C2R system is built mostly in C-sharp. So uh, we didn't want to clutter the system with any more different um, languages or different clients. Um, we just wanted to keep it simple and native to the um, most popular language in the system. Um, so yeah, C-sharp client just seemed like a reasonable solution. Uh, the second reason why we wanted to do something like this is because we thought it would be nice to have something that wasn't just uh, of use to us and wasn't just a solution to our problem, but also a problem or a solution to uh, problems that other people might have. Um, we wanted to build something that uh, everybody could use uh, or everybody who needed uh, IRLs could use. And finally, it was just a really great fit for our assignment. It was just a nice challenge. Uh, just enough work um, to fill the hours that we needed to fill. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun uh, working on it. So um, we started working on the client, uh, worked on it a lot. I'm not going to talk about the entire process. I'm just going to show you what we ended up with. Uh, and I think the best way to showcase uh, what we ended up with, or just explain it first, is uh, by showing you the uh, class diagram for the library we created. Uh, now I know what everybody's thinking. Uh, this is a terrible image for a PowerPoint. Uh, I, I completely agree, so I'm just going to simplify it a little bit. Uh, let's start at the top with the um, session object, which is basically uh, the access point to our library. A uh, user can create a session and thereby start a connection to their uh, iROT server. Um, to do this, we need some account information this is stored in the account um, object, and we also need a connection object, which uh, handles all the communication with the server, all the messaging, all the sending and receiving, and etc. 
Uh, then we're going to get into the meat of the program, which is like the, the data object manager, which handles all the different functionalities regarding uh, data objects, creating them, deleting them, downloading, uploading, renaming, whatever. Um, to do this, we use a representation of a data object in C-sharp, a data object class or object. Uh, and we basically do the same thing for collections by uh, using the collection manager, again, creating, renaming, moving, whatever, it's all in there. Um, and then again, we have a representation of collections as a C-sharp object. Um, we also have a metadata manager. This uh, handles all the metadata functionality. And again, a metadata representation. Uh, this time it's just a struct because metadata doesn't really have that many uh, functions. Uh, finally, we have the query manager. This handles all the query related um, functionality. So querying data objects, querying collections, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the final three classes that you can see aren't really that important. They're just utility. So I'm just not gonna go into them that much. Um, but I think a lot of people when they see this might recognize the structure and the naming of the classes, um, which is true. The, a lot of inspiration for this client was taken from the Python client, uh, also a little bit from the PHP client. And uh, I think for us, this was a really nice way to learn how uh, a library should look like. And just uh, the main process for us was just looking at what other people did, uh, trying to take some inspiration from that, and then just trying to incorporate our own style and trying to look at what we thought could be improved, uh, what we thought was really great, what we thought was a little bit less great, and then just trying to build something that we thought was really useful and uh, other people could use as well. So that's why uh, it might look a little bit like um, like some other clients that are out there. So yeah, that's basically um, the structure of our clients, uh, what it looks like. Uh, now, before we go into the demo, I just want to talk a little bit about what does this client actually bring. Uh, I could be pretty brief about this. It's not really that elaborate. Um, basically, C Sharp programmers can now also access IDOT directly from within their C Sharp code. Uh, and a uh, direct result from this is that IROTS becomes just a little bit more uh, accessible for developers, uh, at least uh, for C-sharp developers. And of course, the added bonus to here is that uh, we passed our assignment. <laughs> so that's really nice. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun uh, working on this. Um, and it's a lot of fun to present here, but that'll be, that'll be it for my part of the presentation. Uh, I think we should move on to uh, the demo to showcase uh, how our client actually works. And for this, uh, I think I'm gonna pass the torch on to Jelle. So uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll also answer them, but um, let's have a look at what Jelle has to say now. So uh, as promised, the, the demo, um, because we wrote uh, all the code as a library, it's very easy to import. You can just go over to the GitHub and download it and build it using uh, Visual Studio. You can then just place it near the solution uh, as here and then you can add a reference in Visual Studio um, under the dependencies and then with a using statement you basically have access to the library and as Rink already uh, told the session is like the main object of the of the library and you will be using that to uh, create the connection and do everything you need so when creating a session you will give it all the data you need like in i comments you can store this in the text data or somewhere else in the program but that depends on what you want and then when you create the session object you will be uh, wanting to do the setup which will be giving you password and this setup process will give you a key you can reuse later without having to store the password on your computer and re-entering the password every time so this will give a key back and yeah, then I'm not sure if you do you want to share your screen maybe? Or? Oh, oh. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, okay. Let me let me start again. <laughs> yeah, that's better. All right. So as I was explaining, you can just download the library and build it using C sharp and add it to your solution. And then after that, add a reference to it in Visual Studio as well. Once you have the res reference, you can add a using statement so uh, C Sharp knows you are using this library and then you're good to go. As Rink explained, you have the session object we will take each data um, like here. This can be stored in a text file like in iCommands or other programs, but that depends on what you want to do with it. And once you have the session, you can do the setup, which will take a password, as I will demonstrate shortly after explaining what the code does. 
and this setup will uh, give you a hash code back, which you can then use to start the session multiple times. Um, this ensures you don't have to enter, en en enter your password every time you want to use the program. And once the session is started, you can do basic uh, operations like opening collections, creating collections, editing files, uploading files, and all that good stuff, like Ring explained earlier. So now I'll be starting the program, entering my password, and I'll show you what it does. The program is now started, and we are trying to create the session. Let me click through. Okay, we now have a session, and we can do the setup part and the start part. Um, I put this on one line so you can see my password and hash because that will be uh, quite inconvenient to say the least. Okay, I just entered my password. Let's put another breakpoint down and press enter. Let's see if it's going to work. All right. All right, let me try again. <laughs> okay, now we logged in using the hash code and the password, and now we can start doing operations. The first thing we'll do is create a collection. We'll be opening the folder we got from the Yoda uh, repository, and we're creating a, a collection we call home. Using this collection, we can do multiple operations. As you can see, you can query, add metadata, change the directory, open directories, and all that good stuff. What we now will do to, is uh, demonstrate creating a text document. We can use the collection and create a data object with this string. We just did that, and now we can take a look at Yoda. And as expected, we can see the file now in Yoda, which is an iRoads implementation. Okay. Now we will be um, opening the data object, like here, and um, saying, okay, we're going to read and write to it. Then we start at the beginning of the file with file seek. And then we can write to the file using, using file write. Okay, we just wrote the word wrote to it. Now we can start at the beginning and again and read the file data and write it again. And as we can expect, hello world says here. Okay, then you can oper do operations like file remove, but also other stuff like writing again, reading again, or just doing nothing and saying it on the server. Okay, and now we can create a file using similar syntax, but then for creating a collection. And we can then open this collection again, and then uh, create a data object called image.png. This is just a hole where we can place our data in. Then I'll be asking for a file name, and this file name will be uh, removed the, the quotation marks of it, and then we'll read the content as bytes, and then write it to the server. Let me see. Okay, this is the file I'll be using. I'm dragging it. Wait, let me see. <laughs> it seems to be I'm having a problem right now. That's strange. Mm. Let me comment this out. All right. I'll start it again. It's giving a bit of a problem because uh, I'm doing it so slow. <laughs> okay, doing it again.
Okay, I want to skip this part because we already did this. Okay, and now I'll be wanting to write the file path. All right, now it works properly. Now we're reading, uh, writing the files to the server um, and adding metadata to, to it. I can show you that we now have a folder, files, with the image we just uploaded. Um, and then we can add metadata to it, like file amount with a value. And now we can give it another file path to download it to. I will be using a different file path this time to write the bytes to. And as you can see, we just created a new file with the content of the old one using the Yoda uh, iBrots implementation. Um, and one of the really main things of our library is the possibility to, to do things um, in a different way. Like you can uh, create a collection and add data objects and open themselves and so you can manipulate the data objects directly, or you can use the collection and manipulate the data objects from there. Like what we did here is um, open the files and read those, but you could also do something like files dot and then um, uh, open read from a data object or write to a data object directly. So that depends on what you want to do, but there's always multiple ways to do things. And then after uh, writing the bytes to it and adding the meta metadata, we can uh, query the objects again. And as you can see, here is the query result. Um, I won't go into further detail for that because it's quite explanatory once you run it yourself. And then you can use the file to get the metadata like this, or you can do it from a collection again. And here's the metadata as explained with the file amount and the values from here. And then once you're done, you can remove files or let them stay on the server. But again, that depends on what you want to do. And then you can remove the file and remove the collection. And then everything is done again. Let me see. All right, so we remove the files again. And if I reload this page, you can see that the files folder does not exist anymore and everything is gone. Um, so this is our example code, but our uh, GitHub um, repository also contains a, a test file where you can see similar examples of the code and where you can play around with it to, to get to know it. Um, this was the demo. If you have any questions, you can contact me or Rink about that, and I'll be finishing the presentation now. So you can find our work at the University of Utrecht repository with a link here, and you can also find this presentation with a link in the Slack. Um, and now our closing words. Um, we would, think, would like to thank you, everybody, for the award we got. We are uh, very grateful about it. And if you uh, like to work on our uh, repository and our project, it's on the same repository I just uh, showed you. And you can work on it further because I don't think Rink and I are going to be doing much work because we're busy with uh, other stuff. Um, and if there are any questions, you can let us know and we can try to help you and maybe even set up the uh, repository for you. Um, these are the links. You, you can find them in Slack as well to the repository and to the care to report project we made this program and library for. Uh, this was our presentation, I believe. Yeah, that was it. Okay, I'll be stopping my screen share. Yeah, I'm just going ahead and um, putting the links in Slack now. Um, there you go. So yeah, thanks everybody for uh, listening to us. Uh, it's been nice presenting here. Of course. Thank you so much. And again, congratulations. Uh, Thank you. We, there are a couple questions. Um, let's see. So Alan uh, from IRODS, he says, I noticed that you're using PAM authentication in the demo, which is yep. a relatively recent addition to the Python uh, client library. Uh, he says, did you guys run ahead and implement parallel transfer as well? <laughs> 
Um, well, that's actually quite a story because uh, we used Yoda to test our things and we did not have access to uh, our own server, so to say. We only implemented um, PAM as also described in the um, documentation you can find on the GitHub as well. So that's the only one we did. And uh, parallel uploads and downloads is also one of the things we have not implemented. And we made a small list on the GitHub of things we um, well, did not do. So no, <laughs> that's a, that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's fine. That's great. Um, uh, Jason Kaposky asks, have you considered building your library to conform to existing standards such as system.io.pipelines? I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or not. Uh, Jason, I'm you... actually not familiar with that, no. Okay. Jason, do you want to say anything about that? Um, if you... Oh. I was just uh, much like we are building libraries within C++ to conform to the existing, you know, standard library formats. .NET has IO pipelines that can be extended to allow things to plug together more seamlessly. So this would give C# -sharp, you know, and .NET developers the ability to take advantage of existing libraries. Okay, that actually sounds pretty cool. Um, I think I'll update the GitHub to just put that onto the to-do list. Yeah, again, uh, we're uh, second year students. <laughs> our, our knowledge <laughs> is limited. Um, so we made the best project we could make with our existing knowledge. And um, as we say, it, it's not a done project. There, there's still plenty of work to do. So if anybody has some spare time, I'm, sh I'm sure they could, could work on that. It's, it's a, a start of, or something it could be. <laughs> Very good. Oh, it's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mike Conway wants to know if you got bonus points for doing the talk. Uh, no, I, I'm actually like our main uh, coordinator. We didn't even inform about this. I, I think we just contacted Leslo uh, for this talk, uh, but we just got a pass. There's no grade involved or anything. So uh, yeah, we just got our points. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I think that might be it. Uh, if anybody have any uh, other uh, audi audible questions, if you want to raise your hand and ask, otherwise we can let these guys go. I appreciate it so much. Uh, it's great work. It's wonderful to see student work and uh, encourage many others to do it too. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye.